Today we have an important topic to discuss that directly impacts people living with MOG antibody disease. We'll be exploring the ICD code for MOG AD. 8A41.1 is the important code, but how does it actually impact people with the condition? Firstly, let's start off with what ICD actually is. ICD stands for the International Classification of Diseases. It's a standardised system used worldwide to classify and code medical diagnoses and and injuries, which was developed by the World Health Organization. The system is updated annually and the 11th edition came into effect in February 2022. Each diagnosis and injury is represented by an alphanumeric code, which allows healthcare providers and insurance companies to accurately document and bill for medical services. So what does the ICD have to do with MOG antibody disease? Well, the ICD system contains codes for various medical conditions, but not not all conditions, and MOG antibody disease did not have a code in the ICD system until recently. On October the 2nd, 2023, the MOG project announced that its executive director, Julia Leffler, along with the MOG project's executive board and Children's Hospital Los Angeles pediatric neurologist, Jonathan Santoro, secured approval to create an ICD code for MOG antibody disease. As of the 1st of October, 2023, an official code for MOG antibody disease was included in the 10th edition of the ICD and this code is now being used in the 11th edition too. MOG antibody disease now has its own unique code which makes it easier for healthcare providers to identify, document and treat this condition correctly. The code for MOG antibody disease is 8A41.1 and the official description for the code is neuromyelitis optica myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein antibody positive. Now this is great for health care providers and insurance companies, but what impact does this have on people living with MOG antibody disease? Without a code, people with MOG antibody disease had previously been linked in with other similar conditions, such as neuromyelitis optica and multiple sclerosis, or they had been grouped depending on their MOG antibody disease presentation. So, optic neuritis, transverse myelitis, or possibly acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. This complicated the process of someone getting an accurate diagnosis of MOG antibody disease and could lead to insurance delays and in some cases inappropriate treatment. Having a dedicated ICD code for MOG AD is crucial for several reasons. It helps ensure proper and timely diagnosis, can lead to correct and faster treatment and overall better outcomes for that person. Having a code for MOG antibody disease also impacts how healthcare providers make treatment decisions. Healthcare providers can access specific treatment protocols, clinical guidelines, and research related to MOG antibody disease, all thanks to its dedicated ICD code. Julia Leffler, an executive director from the MOG project who was involved in the announcement, said this, MOG antibody disease patients like me need an ICD-10 code for everything, from properly recording a diagnosis, to securing health insurance coverage, to encouraging clinical trials and obtaining FDA-approved medications, indicated for MOG antibody disease. Understanding that the ICD-10 code for MOG antibody disease exists can also empower people living with the condition. It helps them advocate for their healthcare needs, navigate insurance claims, and access support groups and resources. Julia also had this to say about how it could impact the MOG antibody disease community. For the MOG antibody disease community, this code is more than a win for better health outcomes and fewer insurance delays. It gives our rare disease an identity and legitimises it. So in conclusion, the ICD code for MOG antibody disease is not just a code, it simplifies diagnosis, guides treatment decisions and also empowers individuals living with the condition. Remember you're not alone in this journey and knowledge is your best ally. So if you want to learn more about MOG antibody disease, how to manage the emotional part of the condition, then check out this video here.